Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing as Transval. No longer discriminatory Transval, but we still have all that gold. Last episode we did end discrimination and we went on to multiculturalism. We did talk about how to do it and we finally got it. And so now we are kind of uh, getting a ton of pops. Uh, we're getting mass migration movements pretty consistently here in our like industrial heartland or, you know, area that we have a lot of migration attraction. And we are anticipating, you know, once we finish incorporating or as you know the turmoil in these areas goes down in Persia we're gonna start getting a lot of pops here Kerman is already uh, incorporated and we can build up here just fine they have zero uh, you know uh, what is it uh, turmoil and so you know this is a prime place for us to be able to build up now we even have the trade center for the extra migration attraction and we have all these peasants and we still have you know uh, incoming 40k and so what we are doing now is we are starting to switch gears from being trying to be really really pop efficient and putting in a lot of industrial sectors and stuff over here. Um, and we are instead, you know, well, the auto queue is putting in a ton of engines because we have a huge engine shortage. But we are instead being resource focused back here in Persia where we have all these peasants. This labor has been unlocked. And so we should be popping off. We basically tripled construction last episode. And I know we're running a huge deficit. Um, but uh, we should be able to, you know, continue to... Um, ramp up pretty quickly off the back of having you know all these peasants unlocked and having buildings actually being able to employ because we're not discriminating against people anymore so this is a little bit of uh ai tomfoolery the ai first creates the british senegal uh you know colonial charter and then they go to annex it uh which doesn't make much sense um we're probably not going to get involved there's not much reason to uh but that's just uh, quite a bit of strangeness. It will actually let us use our Transvali uh, Mauritania and as well as perhaps uh, Transvali Guinea uh, as a sort of trade piece uh, to maybe use with the the UK. But that is that is uh, quite a strange move by the UK, um, you know, annexing the very territory that they gave up. So we, we researched Ironclad because now we can actually build up a navy. And what we're going to do is we have these frigates coming in and down kind of uh, in our, you know, South African type of uh, guys. We have these up to 30 frigates. We're going to probably use that more as a landing squad. But I think what we're going to do is up here in Persia, we're going to recruit up a lot of Ironclads. Oh, wait, why can't we? We have no supply of ironclads. Okay, fair enough. So we will have to swap over one of our uh, buildings to be able to produce ironclads. Please tell us we have two. Okay, we do. Uh, we're going to swap one of these to steel holes, and now we are going to be able to build ironclads. Uh, we went from no navy to now we are, will have the pride and fear of the seas. Also, this will allow us to do stuff that is not just like near and around what we're doing or directly adjacent to, you know, what we have going on. So we are going to recruit up a big ass Navy uh, in this uh, second Transvali fleet. Well, maybe we just want one big fleet until we actually get a decent sized Navy going. Maybe we'll do that. Also, it helps that we have, uh, you know, a bunch of these frigates over here. We're trying to land Marina Kingdom, looking to expand in a way that kind of looks nice, and uh, we're having a little bit of difficulties getting in, obviously, because we only have 11 boats. But they do have a regular, so we should be able to, you know, get in despite we're eating a pretty severe landing malice. Another bug in the world of bugs is that uh, because uh, <laughs> the East Indies has become independent, it seems, uh, what has happened here, well, what has happened here is we have lost all of our, uh, market access because the market access was going through the East India Company. I'm not sure if this is going to reset, uh, on the next month. Uh, okay, it looks like it does reset. Okay, 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 fair enough. Um, but we are going to be going for Venezuela here. They have rubber and they have oil, uh, and, uh, it looks like we might have to do a little bit of a tussle with Spain. So hopefully Spain doesn't park any navy over there, because if so, we can't really do anything. Uh, but the AI ha doesn't seem to, like, really like to do that, and so we have three armies mobilized here. Uh, we're gonna land with two of them, and then the other two we are just going to use to defend our HQ. Uh, we don't have any war goals in on Spain, because we really don't want them to mobilize or use too many troops troops and so by doing this we are hoping that they use fewer of their troops um, and we're just going to land on two sides here with our two navies uh, to be fair um, 
they should, like, one of these landings should break really hard, and then we're hoping that the other one gets in, but we don't see the... Spain can't put troops here, and it looks like they're going to try and land us, uh, but we have more than enough, I think. Uh, why don't we just be safe rather than sorry? Looks like we have more than enough boyos, um, you know, defending the homeland that we should be able to get Venezuela. And so this is our first kind of pretty big overseas war. We did have the little test run with Marina Kingdom, and so uh, hopefully this generates a lot of revenue for us in the future, and it will also, well, we already have, ooh, look, we're getting extra interest because we actually have boats, um, but we are, where should we put it? I'm not sure. Kind of tempting to go after, let's put it in the, well, Greece is uh, something we would like to take for the company, uh, as is Belgium, but currently they have pretty strong protectors overall, and so it's going to be a little bit tough. Why don't we put more interests in China. We're kind of hoping that there's some sort of separatist movement we can piggyback on at some point, um, because a Chinese province would be really, really valuable to us. Uh, but uh, looks like we're off and ready to go here, and so hopefully this kind of works. Uh, we'll see. The first battle's probably going to be really bad for us, because we're eating... Oh, well, I guess not. We're eating a pretty significant penalty, but I guess if they only bring half as many troops, we might just be able to get in straight away and enforce on Venezuela. So this is one of the strongest event chains in the game, and it's going to help us out a lot. We get the thought, the word, and the ideal. This isn't the really good one. The good one comes next, but 20% university throughput is going to be really good. The good one is open arms, where we will get a permanent 25% migration attraction modifier teaming shores. So now, you know, taking a look in here where we, like, uh, we can see that we are starting to get a lot of these modifiers. Unfortunately, the intelligentsia is no longer powerful. We're going to try and be fixing that. Uh, but this is a pretty hefty, you know, percentage modifier. Why don't we... We're also not encouraging migration here anymore because we have raked back a lot of our authority and we're just doing consumption taxes and encourage resources and free stat. And to be fair, the encourage resources and free stat, this is becoming proportionally a smaller and smaller portion of our economy. And so maybe we want to swap off of that uh, in the near future and just go for the additional consumption tax, um, you know, which will be good during this period where construction is going to be very, very, very valuable to us. And so maybe this is a little bit better. I'm not sure. So the East Indies market is all kind of messed up, but um, they did break free from the Netherlands. I think this was the result of a play uh, from the uh, UK, and the Netherlands is in our market. We would kind of like to have the East Indies in our market, so what we're going to do is we're going to export as much as possible to them, uh, you know, fulfill all their shortages, and then import from them, you know, everything they have a ton of, uh, and hoping uh, to be able to pull them into uh, our customs union uh, relatively well. Uh, starting to do a lot more customs union play as a result of, you know, not being able to get inside someone's market, unfortunately, uh, which is really what we would want, but uh, you can't have everything you would want, because this would allow us to siphon off so many migrants, but it is what it is. Uh, so we will see what this looks like, uh, you know, kind of once we do this, we see that hey, it's looking like they're kind of in fan of, uh, fans of the trade agreement, and once we get the trade agreement, it'll hopefully be easier to get the customs union sometime down the road. This war has been a little bit of a nail-biter here to reduce the autonomy in the Sikh Empire, uh, mainly because if we just, like, are having huge difficulties pushing into this. Um, we initially had more uh, armies here. One of the problems is, of course, uh, how troops don't borrow on offense when they should be borrowing on offense. Um, they should be borrowing armies uh, that are set to be allowed to borrow, but they don't, which means that it's better to have one absolute fat doom stack because they can borrow on defense. We have two relatively big armies on offense, but um, we might reorganize the armies after this war. For example, this guy. Um, we were going to have like this third medium-sized army. It probably should just be inside one of the, the bigger two armies. Um, you know, that way we can actually push into this sort of thing. And also, we want to make double sure that we are not pushing with any of these little guys because this kind of nukes our progress, right? So this guy is stationed at the Persia HQ. He's not helping out uh, because we have a bunch of guys on rapid advance and they would just, you know, uh, run into a brick wall here. But I think we will pull it out kind of at the last second here. I'm hoping. Uh, it'd be really uh, unfortunate if these guys gain independence. But I think that, you know, we are losing ground or 
we are starting to get to the point where we've ground down their troops, then we can actually, I think, swing this in. Uh, but it is sketchy because they are decaying us down. So this would be really unfortunate if they got their war goals because one of their war goals includes independence and, of course, increasing autonomy. But the independence is what we're concerned about. However, if they got independence, we would probably be willing to give up all of our subjects to join someone's market. A uh, little disappointed that no one's asked us to join their market, uh, but um, just so we can siphon off the migrants. But yeah, it looks like we're finally getting in we finally ground down their troops enough uh they aren't recovering uh you know or recruiting up their barracks and so uh us just killing enough soldiers has made it so we can finally get in here it looks like uh just before we get enforced out uh if we tick them below zero they'll be willing to capitulate uh which is pretty nice um how that works because if they were a human player uh they would just weight us down to zero at this point because we would not be able to enforce a faster on them and when we hit at like minus 70 uh when we finally get them below zero they would just be able to wait us out but uh since it's the ai and the ai is like hey i can be enforced upon here uh then they well this is annoying if this sticks in but it's not and we can reduce their autonomy here even though they might be able to wait us out they're getting minus nine a tick and we're getting what minus two a tick so it's going to take 20 ticks. I guess we actually would enforce on them, uh, but we will reduce their autonomy here. So it'll be just another five years until we can get access to those sweet, sweet pops. Um, we have been keeping an eye on the domestic and trying to change some of their laws in such a way that it allows us uh, to maybe be able to uh, open their borders. Because if we can open their borders, we can get their pops. Uh, but since their borders are closed, um, it looks like in another five years, we'll be getting the annex. And with that, you know, 18 million pops, which is like plus plus 50% pops, which will help us out a lot. So we are going pretty ahead of time in order to research malaria prevention as quickly as possible here. I think we decided that it's not going to be possible for us to, I don't think we can kneecap the UK enough to eventually annex them so that we can form the UK. I think this is maybe, a, I don't think we have enough time left in the game, um, even if we played to 36, and generally we don't like playing to 36, and so um, instead we're just going to try and get some nicer, cleaner borders, um, you know, throughout this region, I think, uh, as part of our goal. Uh, and to that end, malaria prevention is going to be really helpful. So we are rushing that a little bit more ahead of time than we otherwise would. Although it's not entirely unreasonable. It's probably the most rushable tech in the game. And then what's going to happen is we're going to rely more on technology spread as well moving forward. And what we are doing uh, is we are going to be building up a lot of universities. Which can also maybe uh, de uh, bring the, the intelligentsia back up to powerful. We would really love to have their bonus doubled for the plus 50% migration attraction. But um, we are going to going to be building up to 31 unis in Transvaal uh, because they will contribute more clout uh, in the capital and so we will get more intelligentsia clout and then we're also building up to 31 universities in Tabriz uh, because this is the area which has the absolute most um, uh, peasants and so uh, we are probably going to be wanting to build here a lot overall you see that the, there's a massive exodus I think a lot of them are going to Kerman though um, but we are going to want to start building here especially because there's no turmoil um and so we do have some stuff going on. We are incorporating. We've started to incorporate a few more places. Um, really, a lot of what we've been doing is just been building like wood and government buildings, and that's kind of like it. Uh, and if you take a look, uh, you can see all the all the places we're incorporating. It's not even all the places that are possible to incorporate. Um, this is going to make a tech like uh, we might even do central planning way earlier than like what's a normal kind of time to do central planning. We have electricity spreading to us. This is a feels bad, man, because this is, like, uncomfortable to turn on, but, like, it's objectively, I think it's good. Electric streetlights in particular is a very, very good PM, and so... <sighs> okay, well, fair enough. We'll probably be turning the lights on um, as soon as we get that, but it's going to be a bit uncomfortable. But for now, uh, we are we have accrued a bit of infamy. We're kind of chilling. We have subjugated, you know, some more people. You can see that our market has this nice look uh, in terms of where it's all coming through. If we can get Egypt in the market, we will have, like, a, a pretty nice, and we get most of Africa, we will have a pretty nice swath, uh, you know, for our market here. And so this is kind of what we're shooting for. Uh, but they have been a little bit 
bit sticky on this front, and so we might have to actually like fight them, take Sinai, release Syria, something like this, uh, and then get Syria, and then maybe go after some of these Ethiopian guys, even though the territory and the land's not that good. Uh, maybe it's still going to be worth it, uh, just from you know uh, a theme perspective. I do think it's pretty amusing that Britain, after annexing British Senegal, promptly created a new British Senegal uh, with this colonial administration. Definitely a little bit of uh, AI strangeness there. So the East Indies imploded and uh, we have a neat, unique opportunity here because Java here, uh, they are uh, currently experiencing a revolution that has almost all their pops. However, it does appear that they're winning this revolution because they can take the other guy below zero. So somewhere around 20 or 30 uh, negative, what we're going to do, assuming they're still winning, which, oof, maybe they're not. Maybe they are not. So what we were going to do, though, is um, when the revolution is looking like they're going to lose, uh, what you can do is you can declare on the other guy, uh, and then you can subjugate them, and then you will get the reduced price because it won't calculate any of the revolution's guys. However, this is not going to be possible for us, unfortunately, and we would have to pay the sh full shebang unless... Unless their capital were over here, but it does look like they're enforcing this guy below zero. Uh, and so, uh, and they're going to be enforcing faster, almost certainly, right? Yeah, so um, since they're enforcing a lot faster on Java itself, rather than the capitalist revolt, we'll probably go for someone else here. But this has been busted wide open. This is going to be a really strong expansion spot. Uh, so we're going to go for it around about these parts. So we fail the petition to switch to agrarianism because obviously we're not switching to agrarianism. And now this guy is super mad and he wants protected speech. Well, we're kind of okay with protected speech, especially because, I mean, one day we'll finish all these unis. This bug is really, really obnoxious. The uh, construction queue bug that gives 75% over um, because we just like, we just can't clear the queue whatsoever. We just have a ton of, it's like all wood fish, uh, barracks, naval bases, and like also iron because we wanted to focus on that a little bit too. We might just actually get rid of all of our auto expands um, to, that are, the thing is, is they're just so good. It's just, we can't like, we just don't have the control we want. And what we really need is to be able to, like, build... <sighs> we have very, very little control relative to, like, what we want to do. And this is, like, why we can't, like... We want these universities, like, really bad. But then we also need government administration so we can... Or we need bureau bureaucracy so we can do stuff. And then also, like, the wooden, uh, the wooden stuff is going to be just disgustingly efficient. Um, like, we needed to get education up to the next level. It helps a lot when you're going ahead of time. And so, um, yeah, anyways, a bit of a tangent. Um, we're also building up our first little bits of electricity. Um, we uh, went after Jambi, and now we're going after Kalebs, or Bhutan, as it were. Um, these ones are really cheap. Uh, Java is generally the really expensive one, because the, this is where all the pops are, and for whatever reason, these guys are going to be recognized. And so, you know, stuff like Jambi, Benjar, Bhutan, these are going to be much better takes than a Java itself itself, um, but uh, this is going to be pretty good for us. There's like notably a ton of sulfur in Jambi, so we kind of wanted to secure that for ourselves because we do not have a lot of sulfur, and so this will help out quite a bit, um, you know, in the event that we are going to be reliant on or needing to be self-sufficient. Although I suppose we actually do have a bunch of sulfur in Sin, uh, but overall not a ton. Honest to God, no idea why uh, Belgium's going so hard in the paint against Egypt. I don't think I've ever seen something like this before, um, but... Uh, I mean, the AI just... Okay, anyways, they're they're trying to go after Egypt. We don't want them to go after Egypt. We sided for just an obligation. We could have sided for release Wallonia, but then we would have had a hard time getting to Wallonia, because uh, I don't think we're going to go after the Netherlands, and Wallonia would be nice to take, but... Um, Okay, anyways, I suppose we we could have then later, sometime down the road, subjugated uh, Flanders and then conquered Wallonia in order to get the particularly good company, but we don't have enough time left in the game. And this is one of the things about the, the change to the, the way you annex subjects that also makes it so that I don't think we could do the UK thing, is because we would have to make it so that the UK was uh, a minor power 
and then 15 years later would be when we would be able to annex them after protectorating them in order to be able to form the UK ourselves. And the fact that this is 15 years instead of five years effectively like decreases the length of the end date by 10 years as it relates to doing weird and funky stuff like annexing the UK. And so same thing goes for like if we wanted to subjugate Flanders and then subjugate Wallonia and then eventually annex Wallonia, we're talking like a timeline that looks like 20, 25 years and like I don't even think we're going to be playing in that long so that's why we didn't release Wallonia although release Wallonia would have probably been okay we just went for the obligation and we're just going to try and get a actually pretty looked, a big looking market we can invite them to our customs union now they will accept which is going to be pretty nice because now look at that look at that so we're we're almost uh, kind of got the full shebang here. I guess maybe we will have some sort of showdown with the UK uh, in order to get like this remaining stuff, um, but uh, it does look pretty good, uh, you know, on that front for us. Um, really, I was hoping that this war wouldn't pop off. I'm not too keen on fighting it, I suppose, uh, especially because we can't just like stick our armies there, so we actually have to like micro and stuff. How much navy do they have? About as much as us. We'll see what they want to do. I mean, are they just going to park a navy there? And I don't know what this is supposed to do here. The seventh stack. I mean, you, you're you not landing. If they're just going to sit at home, we'll just wait it out, I suppose. But very, very strange them going for Egypt like that. All right, so more emerging on the global stage. We do get our uh, scramble for Africa from our malaria prevention, which is going to be super nice and will also let us colonize anywhere. Uh, we're going to add in the last few places that we were not colonizing before, uh, as well as, you know, New Guinea. And so this is going to feel pretty good. And then we, <laughs> we still haven't completed these unis. These unis are just rotting in the queue. Man, just feels so. There's, it's literally all, nearly all government buildings. We have ports, we have universities, we have naval bases, and we just can't clear the queue. It's, it's rough. I mean, we just want to add more construction, but we're also trying to chip away at this credit line because our, I mean, it's, it's not as good with major power. Maybe we just like full send. We should probably just full send construction. Okay, enough enough funny business. It's time to full send. Um, so what we could do is we could go ahead of time for, uh, you know, maybe electrical capacitors. Because once you start getting the electricity up, I kind of do like getting it, like, all back to back to back. Um, and so we could do something like electrical capacitors most of the way. And then we could also just push through reinforced concrete faster. I don't hate this, except we can add more construction sectors. It's really not necessarily going to be too good. We could go for Monitor. We still haven't built up too much Navy, and so Monitor would maybe be a nice little adjustment. Actually, I think we just go Investment Banks here. I think this is just uh, a very solid tech for us to pick up. And maybe we should have done it a little bit differently, um, where we researched investment banks below, before malaria prevention, but I really wanted to start getting a decent spread. We will, of course, save and load, because very often, or actually this does look like the, the proper speed, um, right? Yeah, the colonization does look like it's going at the correct speed, and we get education on up. And so, uh, you know, all, on all metrics, we're doing pretty well. Like, we have 90 million GDP. Um, like, if we take a look at, like, the global, like, sort of situation, we're number six. Um, we're not that far behind the next guy in North Germany. As far as SOL goes, Belgium's beating us. So of course, they're not beating us in this war. I don't, they're not even trying to do a landing. They know they can't, and so it's just a wait fest. Um, but we have some infamy decay, so it's fine. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, pop goes, we're in pretty good shape, but we have to keep in mind we're going to annex this 18 million uh, in relatively short order, which will kick us in the fifth place ahead of uh, France, but just behind the UK. And this is the UK that's been annexing all over India, so this is why the UK has so much pops. Um, but they discriminate, and we, we in South Africa, we don't discriminate against anyone because we have multiculturalism. So it's pretty obnoxious, but our fleet of 19 and 13 cannot beat their fleet of 7. Um, we have a total of 11 ironclads and a whole bunch of frigates. And okay, the frigates' tech isn't that good, and they have monitors and torpedo boats, but they only have one capital ship, uh, which has 50 offense and defense, and we have way more of those, and we still lose, because what happens is, is since we have so many of these admirals, um, they each go in, you know, two boats at a time, or one boat at a time, uh, and they just get wrecked, and so 
like there's no like troop borrowing type of mechanic um, or like borrowing mechanic instead it just splits it and so what we're gonna do I guess uh, is we're gonna see one of we're gonna find one of these guys and we're gonna promote him to max and hope that he leads like a, a lion's share of this thing because we think that seven frigates and six ironclads should be able to like clap these guys but if it's going to be you know cut into fourths right if it's like two to three two to three two to three against seven repeatedly like back to back to back of course we lose but like the navy should be able to beat this like I don't know. And this is when we had, we stacked both of our navies on top of this. And so it's a little bit unfortunate, but also it fundamentally doesn't matter because they're not landing us. Uh, they're just instead disrupting our economy, which uh, we don't like that. But we're going to try and do the same thing here where we're going to find a boyo who we think has uh, decent enough traits that, yeah, might as well. Uh, erudite direct. Let's go, baby. So this guy, we're going to promote this guy all the way and hope that he takes the lion's share of the troops and we get a decent looking naval battle here and so here this is so this is what i'm talking about we're sending well hmm. our true are our fleets truly fully repaired if we're sending in 200 guys okay so maybe that's more of the problem netherlands wants an alliance i don't think we are interested in that but like hmm. let's take a look at some of these ships are they just like not recruited up anymore so we have like, okay, so we have several of these frigates have 1k in them, and then we have like 5k worth of ironclads, right? And so when we get this next battle, maybe with this guy, hopefully it'll be able to pick up, uh, you know, if get enough guys, trade agreement, job, I think we'll pass, defense back, pass. Um, but um, also, the, it, the amount of time it takes for each naval battle one to the other is like a little bit obnoxious. Yeah, they're just clapping our like two to three stacks. And so despite us having like, an overwhelming amount quantity wise you know it doesn't matter because here let's just send this navy back because this these we want to see the other guys fight uh but like even though we have way more quantity wise it's just they can't borrow and not only they can they not borrow so this is just two frigates not only can they not borrow here what's happening is they can't even use their entire unit yeah so two stack gets beaten two stack gets beaten and so this is the guy who should be able to actually lead in a decent chunk of troops right so um because we promote well he should pull a larger percentage of his fleet um and so hopefully okay so here we maybe are going to get a battle that goes well but um wow our offense just blows okay so it's however many frigate there are three ironclads in this battle and then there's eight frigates okay fair enough so really not a lot of ironclad juice uh and so it looks like yeah we're just gonna get dusted up again this one's much closer and perhaps we'd be like fine with this if we could you know get some more well he's not even using all the ironclads in here but yeah i don't know it's uh this like the the way the borrowing works is like frustrating in multiple ways so we have a total of like we're using eight and three when we have 14 and five uh and the other ones aren't being used for anything instead they're being held in reserve for this guy this idiot uh and so we get a battle that's not very advantageous we can't bring all of our guys to bear but if we only had one admiral in this navy it would just bring all the guys is the thing and so now uh, now we only have one admiral, so I think we will get all the guys, but oh, we don't even get all the guys. We just He just brings two frigates. Uh, and so, like, taking a look at this, I'm just kind of frustrated with the way the mechanics work. Uh, taking a look at this, we have a frigate that has 1k left. That guy is not getting used. We have, you know, these two ironclads that have a bunch of guys left. Uh, but instead, we're just using two frigates, and these frigates, uh, you know, between the two of them, they have, like... I don't even know how many guys this is supposed to represent, but obviously we would lose this and we will get, you know, batted out of here. So the 32 guys uh, with more capital ships than them uh, can't bring them to bear, and so we just single file into the Belgium fleet and lose a whole bunch. Again, not super important because, you know, we're going to win this anyways and there's like 100% no way that any of this goes bad, but, um, or bad enough for it to matter, but yeah, anyway. All right, so uh, our infamy is starting to run down, uh, and so if you're not using your infamy decay, you're losing it. So we will like to b just kind of wish, wish Egypt the best of luck here. We're just going to capitulate. 
It doesn't feel super good. We hope that this is not, like, substantive. So they could land this 30 stack, maybe with the 20 stack navy. But I think Egypt can actually just fight this off uh, fine on their own. And this will allow us to, of course, declare our own wars, you know, as soon as we dust up this war, which of course we can, which is the hee hee uprising, hee hee. Uh, very nice that there was a Bemba uprising. So uh, us trading for Rift Valley earlier on was really, really, really nice. Um, now, because it cuts off uh, the British East Africa, so they're just going to lose this and we'll probably eventually pick this up. And so it does kind of give us a nice area of ingress. We'll see if these guys guarantee reduce autonomy and they do uh, and so this will be a nice little source of in, uh, infamy that we can generate uh, in a few spots we will only do the ones that like guarantee accept the reduction of autonomy here um, I think Iraq was the next one we went after, or was it Kiva? It was Kiva. We won't do this one because it's not a guarantee. Um, but, uh, you know, things are shaping up. We are kind of emerging as a global power. Uh, and we have this very nice looking Transvali market. Um, so this is pretty cool. Spanish market acquired this. That's a bit interesting. Uh, but I think we are going to conclude this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You know, do the YouTube algorithm thing. And other than that, have a good day.